So this is the lesson for Freight Train, the famous Elizabeth Cotton tune, but with some jazzy influences and by Pat Donahue and Lenny Bro, and a bit of myself. So we're in standard tuning, and here are my E's. And if you're interested in the tablature, please do open the video description, as you should do with all my videos. So I'm going to play the A parts and then the B parts slowly, etc. speed you can adjust that of course uh, the first the A part is based on the playing of Pat Donahue and he plays a version at well breakneck speed which I think is a bit well too fast and you lose a lot of that beautiful melody so we're starting with we're walking into our C chord and you see the bass moves a lot in that first part to our G, G7, and I do this with a temp wrap for the 3rd fret 6th string and the pinky goes to the 5th fret. Slide down and go to your G7, walk into the C, slide up. This is an indefinite slide, it just doesn't matter uh, where you end it. It just, it has no end, you could say, but it started the second fret, fifth string. And then to our E. And you see the bass here goes. And the next measure it changes to 6, 4 in F. to our partial G and then C. And notice I'm muting the bass like Chad Atkins for example. But in that A part not that heavily as in the other parts. So uh, in bar 14 try to let that uh, G note on the first string, let it ring as long as possible. C. Then the B part is more based on the plane of Lenny Bro, and it has, let's say, a bit more swing it, so I'm ac trying to accent as much as possible the second and the fourth beat. And if, if not much pos uh, is happening in the trebles, like for example measure 18 and 19, then you can really do that. Typical um, features of Chet Atkins style playing. Okay, you muffle the bass, but <clears throat> you often play with the temp more than one string, especially in uh, the second and the fourth beat, so that parts of the chord ring true. If I wouldn't do that, like that, 
gives you sand a bit, uh, makes it fuller. So it's starting with a C, going to the E7, A minor, G7, but with the third fret, fourth string fretted. to a bar G, and notice again the alternating bass switches between, while with the G7 it was like that, so take care of that. Bar 22. See again, pull off. Going down, E7. F. E flat 7, diminished. C. G7. Part C, starting at bar 34, very slowly. Again, we started with a C, E7, A minor, and then in the middle of the beat, the last beat of measure 35, I'm changing to a D7, partial D7. So, so that measure, A minor, lift the pinky, and then you change. And you change to a G. G7, and you see the <clears throat> second finger remains on that second fret. Then a C, five, five, three, five, just for two beats, G sharp. string first fret. And here we're slowing down. F with a G in the bass. And there I made a little mistake in the tap. For the following two measures you have to go to page four all to the bottom. And you see asterisk one and asterisk two. I'm gonna play that first. Like that. And then we're going back to page two, the D part. part typical Lenny Brawl. So we go in, that's a partial C chord. Open second string there. 
And I need my third, my ring finger here in the right hand to play that well as it is written. G7. And then the switch to the second page with a C. the index to the first fret third string so F and here Lenny Brawl normally well in, in his version he goes to a to a whole part with uh, tremolo which I find a bit difficult so I changed it a little bit you can Strum down with the fingers like that and followed by the temp. A little Spanish tinge there. Uh, Lenny Brawl, they call him also the inventor of the Span Jazz. Spanish music mixed with jazz. He's really good at that and has a technique to do it. So. Three, C, and slide to the fifth fret, and I'm, and then I do the slide. So I pick it once, and then pick it again, and go down. Wrap for the sixth string third fret. Then we're adding a little piece of Caravan, the Duke Ellington uh, famous tune, also typical for Lady Bro. I play it slowly. Sorry. 
So the difficult part is, of course, keeping that bass. E7. The whole thing is with E7. You stay uh, in that position and the pinky and the uh, index move around a little bit. And here, of course, by playing a little bit harder, that third string also rings and gives that that train-like effect. Pinky here to the fourth fret, and you can, if you move your wrist like that, the, the stretch will be easier. pinky and the index do all the work and the second finger remains on the fifth string second fret and then in bar 94 we're slowing down and playing Those bars, 98 and 99, three times is enough. I wrote out four, and probably I meant starting at bar 96. That, <clears throat> that was added. But that doesn't matter much. E7, A minor, and then, well, some kind of impossible chord, but it sounds good. Dissonant, open, first fret, fourth fret, third fret, pinky to the third, to the G on the first string, and then again that difficult chord that Lady Brawl uses a lot, it's a lot used in jazz. Strings one and two are fretted by the index, third fret, fourth fret, fourth fret. And then we have a flourish of uh, artificial harmonics. This is the chord you gotta fret. <clears throat> it's like a C9, but your uh, third finger leaves the third string. Well, doesn't fret the third string, only with the index. So that's frets 3, 3, 2. You can, of course, simply don't play the, the harmonics and do a arpeggio of that chord. But when you went from then target with your eyes the 15th fret because there your index has to go. And touching lightly the string and with the ring finger you're gonna play the third and the second string. Like that. All right, that's it for Freight Train. Have fun and listen to the version of Lenny Brawl and Pat Donahue for more ideas. Have fun. <laughs>